<clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Today we're going to talk about the hatch command. And so <coughs> the hatch command is used to add a pattern to the inside of an area. So like on our labs today, our practices, it's called a section view, and it's where we cut the, cut the part in half to see kind of what the inside looks like. We'll do a hash pattern. Um, also, it could be used in um, like architecture to show shingles on the roof or siding um, or on landscaping to show where the earth is, uh, where there's concrete versus just ground. And whatever. So anytime you want to put a pattern in an area um, that's repetitive, you can do um, a hatch. <clears throat> so the hatch is here. And so when it comes up, what I want to do is I want to pick pick points. Never select. Always pick points. It works a lot better. And we're just going to pick the area that we want to hatch. generic hatch pattern we do when we do sections and me mechanical things. These other ones can make mean different materials. We've got some bricks, concrete, parquet, herringbone, uh, shake, cross, which is used to like show grass, uh, earth, all kinds of stuff, um, gravel. So I can just kind of pick which one I want. I want. Um, here I can change the angle. And here I can change the size. If I click on that, you can see right here with the circle, the hatch comes through, it hits the circle, and it stops. <clears throat> if I click on that one, I can change it to ignore, you know, just go through things, or normal, and it'll alternate. Um, This one is going good from that bottom corner. Um, sometimes it won't. So sometimes you tell it which side you want it to line up with. So if I wanted this brick to be a full brick, I could set the origin to the top, the top corner. Or if I wanted a, 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 a brick to be in a certain spot. So let's say I wanted a brick to be right around that, that this. Uh, 
Uh, some of them are really big. So if I go to the concrete, again, at like 0.05. But if you were doing an architectural drawing and you had a larger scale, it'd look, it'd look perfect without scaling it down. Um, let's see what else. And so that's those. Um, also in hatch, we kind of come down, we have gradients. If you pick on one of the gradients, these options can change here. So now instead of being um, the other ones, now we have the colors that we want it to be the gradient from and to. So I can pick from, from the list which colors I want it to be. Tell it be centered or uncentered. You kind of get that. Um, I don't know where we use that too much, but it's there. Also, you notice this annotative or associative right here. What that means is that once I finish the hatch, if I move things around, the hatch is going to go with it. It'll stay surrounded by that object. If I take any of those objects out of the hatch, it'll still go. If I delete an object, though, now the whole thing is not associated anymore. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Guess they, f they fix that and then love it. Um, but if I delete that boundary, then it's, then it's not. But I can still grab kind of where the boundary was to, to move it around. I just don't have the actual edges anymore. But if you can, you go back and just repunch associative after you've done that. No, you can't put a new thing in there. Oh. So if I put a new circle in, it's not going to pick it up. I'd have to go in. And, um, Take it out, put a, put a new one in. Uh, it's really easy to put a new one in, so it's not worth it to try and mess with it. You're talking about the hatch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So another thing I want to talk to about today is like on this one, we have a new line type. It's not on our our current layers. So how do we make a new layer? Yeah, go to, go from here to layers. We go to new cut section. Make it magenta. And then for the line type, we're gonna go load. We're gonna pick Phantom Two. See, that's one of the two two dashes. Say okay. And pick on it and say okay. So now there's our, our one. And we want that to be a thick line, so if you're on the object layer when you click new, it'll make a new one that's thick also. Um, otherwise, you can go into the line weight and set it down to 0.6. So I switch over to that line, I draw a line. There. <clears throat> now, what about the arrows? How can I draw arrows? Uh, dimensions. Yeah, I can put in a dimension to steal an arrow, right? I mean, we haven't talked about dimensions yet. You can extend. But that, that's the way I, I usually do it. Is I'll usually put in a, a small dimension. How can I take that and break it into smaller pieces? Which command? Cut. No. How can, do we go over how you can break a part of polyline? Explode. 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 So I go to explode. Now they're separate pieces. I delete that. Move that over there. Rotate it. And then copy it. 
that's how you get that. The length of your dashes here in model space doesn't matter at all. And when you're model space, don't worry about how long your dashes are, because it doesn't matter. Once you get to your layout, see that looks really big. If I type RE, it'll regenerate it down. So here's where you care what your dashes look like. If you want your dashes bigger, what do you do? Yeah, LTS, right? Line type scale. So I do LTS, make it two, now they're twice as big. I make it five, they're half as big. So usually a line type scale of around 0.5 works good. Um, sometimes there'll be lines. Let's make that into a. Let me bring up the hidden line. So sometimes some of our lines will look good, but other ones won't. And I don't want to make everything a lot smaller just to get a break on that one line or those two lines. So if I pick on it and then go to properties. I have a line type scale here also in properties. And this one affects only that line. So if you have one or one or two or three lines that you want to make just those ones with a smaller dash, this is where you can do it. So then you kind of work down. Starting this week and on lab three, I want the center lines in. Okay? Center line. What? Yeah, the center lines. Center line. So I want the green lines in. Same thing on the lab this week. I want all the center lines in. <clears throat> and I want the section line in also. Questions on hatches or on the different line types and adjusting the dash the dash lengths. Alright, so just wait a minute until I get done. Okay. I've got the computer blocked. <clears throat> so on these views, what are, this is a uh, multi-view drawing, and so this is a front view of the same part, and this is the top view. The front and top view of the same part. <clears throat> and so these edges need to line up as we go to up and down. So this note right here is talking about this hole. So the first line, diameter 0.5, that's this diameter here of the hole that goes all the way through. The second line, diameter two, is the diameter of this part of the hole, the counter bore. And the 0.75 is how deep that comes down. Because okay. that, that symbol there is the depth symbol. So the hole, diameter of a half. Counter board, diameter of two, that's 0.75 deep. And this little mark here means it's symmetric both ways, the same on both sides. <clears throat> Any questions on this? Just a quick question on some. When you get to 3D, then you can stretch, right? What? Will you be able to stretch? No, we're not doing this in two, 3D. This is no, still 2D. 
No, I know. But I mean, in 3D you'll be able to stretch though, right? We saw We're not talking time. about 3D yet. Do it in 2D, just like this. One view on top of the other. Yeah. Uh, for the center lines, we use the center. Yeah. The yeah, use the center layer for the center lines. <clears throat> and then you'll do a hatch in this. And you do all four sections of that hatch in, in one shot. Just pick points and pick all four sections. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, the new lady added. Uh, Correct. Do you want us to edit? Yep. Right. No questions on this one? Here's the next one. Same kind of thing. And then the last. Same thing, this hidden line here lines up with that corner there. This is the hole going through. side just like that. And then this one, now I've got a couple angles and then on these, that needs to stay lined up and that line and that line are parallel, parallel. Just line it up from the corner. And here it has that depth thing again. And that's the depth from the top line to that middle line. Is that three eighths? Questions? Do you want to see how I would make this one? Now I've got that piece done. Just draw it all the way up. Offset three. Offset point five. Well, 
trimming. So using the windows to pick things speeds it up a lot. Now I'll get that over there. Copy. Copy here. Copy here. Yes. Now how do I get the the corner? By using the temporary tracking point, I come over and I actually click there, and now it'll let me track down from that. Holy shit. So using those tracking points lets you keep going just by bringing things up and down. Yeah. XL is what? What's XL? Next line. Construction line. Construction line, right? Yeah. And one of my options is vertical, so V. And I can just bam, 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 bam. not make that the hot water supply layer. Their line type. I'm going to go back to continuous. I don't know why that's on there. thin. So now I want to get my center lines. There's no line. Might as well put it on the center. So line midway between there and there. Anyone know a command that I can make that come out? Stretch that. I can stretch it, right? Or I can use the grips. I can pick up 
pick on it, use the grips. It helps come up a quarter inch, go down a quarter inch like that. I can also go over here and go to lengthen. So I lengthen, I say DE for delta, tell it a quarter inch. Now just by clicking on it, it'll go a quarter inch. Delta. In mirror all those. Move that up a little bit so it's closer. <coughs> so now I can go to my layout. Set it to full scale. Add to fit. Maybe half scale on the day was better. <clears throat> That's why we have multiple layouts. So you can go back and forth between them like that and leaving your, your drawing in model space. So I get it looking good. What's the next step? Next, after I get it centered on the page, lock it. lock it. Come down to the viewport, lock it. Now I won't mess it up. Now I can go out to paper space, double click, add my name, add a title. Since that's a piece of text, I, I, I can't use my own snap on it. You just have to kind of make it look good. Or you can draw it yourself. But if you zoom in enough, you can get anything to be really good.
questions? So when you're drawing, you think about how can I do it so that I'm more efficient? Um, and that's where this class is going now. It's We've already learned all the basics, and so now it's just how do we get better and faster at doing it. Um, so, questions? So there's the lab this week. Next week, there's a, a going back and adding dimensions to a couple other labs will be the, the lab for next, or not next week. Next week, we'll continue this. Then in two weeks, we'll go back and dimension previous labs. Um, and talk about dimension for a couple weeks, and after that, uh, we'll get into doing blocks and things. Like that. And that block, that lab, will be one where you get to pick what you draw. Um, and so start thinking about.